Right. Awesome. That's okay. verdict. That? All right. So we have here a person that does not really need introduction. So Dries, how are you doing today? How is sunny Texas? Um, it's good. I've, I've, um, I arrived here around midnight <laughs> last night. Oh gosh. So I haven't seen the sun yet. Well, yeah. But I'm, I'm sure it will be so. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Like, sorry for not not getting you to sleep longer, but well, you know. It's really great to, to have it's you okay. with us, uh, although you are missing out really not being here in person. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that we will not waste the time because I know that all of you guys, you have a lot of questions for Dries. So let's get to it, I guess. So please, the first question. No? Well, that <laughs> is surprising now. Just really? You can ask me anything. So somebody needs to have a question for Dries. Come on. <laughs> Something about yeah. Here I see a question. Yeah, I don't. Okay, I'll just I'm, ask I'm, it. I've known the Dutch people. They're never shy. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm pretty new to the um, how do you say the open source concept in this in the sense of uh, business wise. Like, how do you? Um, yeah, simply put, uh, how do you earn money give, uh, you, um, having an open source? Um, software like a, like Drupal, a CMS basically. All right. So the question is basically, how do you earn money working with open source, as uh, as Drupal is? <laughs> That's an interesting one, I guess. Uh, yeah. No, it's a, it, I think it's a great question. Um, I would say most people in the Drupal community that do Drupal professionally, they work for um, an organization either a digital agency or a Drupal shop or sometimes a customer that have their own in-house Drupal team. And so I would say that that's how they make their money. And uh, if they're lucky, um, that allows them to, con you know, their employer also allows them to contribute to Drupal um, a little bit, you know, or sometimes a lot, it depends. But uh, I would say that's how Drupalists make their money. And when we look at the data, because we actually track on Drupal.org where all of the contributions come from. I would say over 60% of all the contributions to Drupal, whether it's to Core or Contrib, are currently made by people that make a living with Drupal, that are paid to make those contributions. Um, that doesn't mean they get to contribute full-time, but as part of their employment, they do get to make contribution. And less than 40% of the contributions are made by people that uh, do it completely on a volunteer basis without getting paid. So it's quite common uh, for Drupalists and contributing Drupalists to to make a living with Drupal, building websites uh, either for an agency or a customer. Thank you, Dries. Cool. So uh, Dries uh, got up very early this morning and he can't hear us, so you can say anything you want. <laughs> I think I heard that. <laughs> Hi, Dries. I have a question for you. But not, not very well, so it, it is helpful to repeat the question. <laughs> yeah, I will do that. If there is a question. Yeah, yes, thank you. There is a question. Um, what is the thing about Drupal that you're most um, uh, 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 interested in at the moment that you have not mentioned in the Dries note? Okay, so what is the thing in Drupal that you are most interested in the mo uh, at the moment that you did not uh, mention in Dries mm. Nodes? Well, that I haven't mentioned yet. Actually, I think um, the whole movement around um, AI and generative AI, I think, is pretty interesting right now. And I know there is concerns and questions about um, you know, ethical and legal concerns about these things. But at the same time, I will say it feels very, very, very exciting to me. It really feels like going back to the early days of the web. Um, and, and, and many of you might not have been there at the early days of the web, but you had this feeling of like, wow, this is like, like we're jumping an S-curve. This is a breakthrough in what we've known. And there's a level of excitement that came with the early days of the web that I feel again with AI. Um, 
And so I'm quite interested in where AI and, and Drupal and AI or website development or AI and digital marketing will start to overlap in the future. All that said, knowing that there's some issues to sort out too, uh, and that these things are far from perfect as well. But uh, I do think that's pretty exciting. And so there's been quite a bit of innovation actually in the Drupal project around AI. Um, you know, Valir, uh, which is a Drupal agency and Sitecore agency, I think they have uh, been doing quite a bit of work about with integration between Drupal and ChatGPT and using um, AI specifically to do things like helping you brainstorm titles for your articles that you write in Drupal or generating tags from content or uh, helping you summarize an article with the goal to write like the Google uh, rich snippet description, the meta uh, description, and, and uh, lots of other use cases. And I think that's interesting and feels like a, a big trend that feels like an unstoppable trend uh, as well. So I think it's important for us to figure out um, yeah, what we do with that in the Drupal project. And I'm quite excited about all of the experimentation that's going on in the Drupal project uh, right now. Cool. Thank you. I see another question coming up. Um, although uh, we should all move to Drupal 11 quite soon, um, what is your personal opinion on uh, all the big Drupal 7 projects that are still out there? Should we abandon them or uh, how long should we keep supporting them? Right, so although we have to move to, uh, about to move to Drupal 11 pretty soon, what's your opinion on Drupal 7 projects and uh, what should we do with those? Shall we abandon those? Abandon those? So basically related to yeah. end of Drupal 7. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult topic because there is a lot of different elements to this topic. So on the one hand, um, I care deeply about making Drupal 7 users uh, successful because uh, I realize that many of them don't have the means to maybe migrate to Drupal 11. And I told this in my last uh, Dries note, I think, but um, I can maybe tell that story real quick. But my dad is a medical doctor, and one of his patients um, somehow knew um, that I started Drupal, and she she was using Drupal 7 for a nonprofit website, and they spent their entire budget um, on basically building a Drupal 7 website and integrating it with CVCRM as a CRM system. And, um, and she told my dad um, at his practice, like, yeah, I'm really stuck. Like, you know, I read that I have to upgrade. And, you know, we took almost a year's budget for our nonprofit to build a website. And that was only, you know, five years ago or something. And she couldn't believe that she had to upgrade again. And she's like, we just don't have the money. And uh, to me that, you know, that that's, there's like a personal aspect to that in the sense that um, I care about those organizations and what they do because, um, you know, as a nonprofit that she runs to help other people, right? So on the one hand, I want to support Drupal 7 sites as long as I, as we can. At the same time, we've been supporting them for a long time and we've given these owners a lot of time actually to migrate and um, I think some of them may just never migrate you know and I think that's probably okay and I also believe a lot of them will churn to other systems because when we built and released Drupal 7 which is now I don't even know how long ago but more than 10 years ago um, the market looked quite differently and the Wixes and the square spaces didn't quite exist and so a lot of these Drupal 7 sites, they're probably better off using a Wix or a Squarespace today uh, because these systems didn't exist and also Drupal has evolved. So I think we're getting to a point um, where we may have to leave them behind you know, because it's also slowing Drupal innovation down. When I talk to the core committers that are working on Drupal 11 right now, um, I mean, they do spend a good chunk of their time still caring about Drupal 7 and let's say a security issue is released. We have to spend sometimes days of doing extra work for Drupal 7. And you think about the opportunity cost of that as well and the time being not spent on innovation and on the people that have made the transition to Drupal 11. I think that's also an important factor to, to consider. So 
I know I'm not giving, but maybe not giving a very clear answer, but my point is there's a lot of different angles and dimensions to this, all the way from caring about those using Drupal 7 to caring about those that are not on Drupal 7 and giving them the best solution as well in terms of uh, not slowing this down. Um, so I think to wrap up my answer, I think we've been very generous in the sense that we've maintained Drupal 7 for a very long time. And I do think at some point in the near future, we need to move on. You know, we can't keep Drupal 7 supported forever. And partially because the technologies that Drupal 7 is built on, PHP 5 and MySQL, I forgot the version, they're, they're also end of life, you know? So it's, it's really time for those to migrate. And so my, maybe to bounce it back, um, you know, think about ways you can help Drupal 7 users, you know, get to Drupal 11. I think all of us, many of us work for digital agencies, et cetera. And, you know, maybe there's a way we can all help get more Drupal 7 users to Drupal 10 or Drupal 11. Thank you, Dries. Thank you. We have room for one or two more questions. I see Rolf. Hold on, Dries. And by the way, it's 6.30 for Dries. <laughs> So you already talked a lot about uh, Drupal 10 and 11, but what are your views for beyond that, like Drupal 12? What, do you have like a long-term roadmap for Drupal in your head? Right, so we're talking quite a bit about uh, Drupal 10 and Drupal 11. Do you have a vision that mm -hmm. goes beyond that for Drupal 12 and so on? So what is the big picture that you have in your head? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Um, so we haven't, we don't have a lot of clarity around what, what happens after Drupal 12, to be quite honest. Um, but I will say that um, not so long ago, and I talked about this at my, in my last uh, Dries notes, um, we kind of evolved the mission of Drupal a little bit. You know, originally we had said Drupal is for ambitious uh, digital experiences. And then we've updated that statement to say Drupal is for ambitious uh, site builders. So really putting a lot of emphasis on ambitious site builders. And ambitious site builders are kind of an interesting persona for Drupal because they live or sit between developers, like the people using, like, let's say, frameworks and everything by code on the one hand. And on the other hand, um, uh, people that don't know how to do any programming and want to do everything through the UI, right? And, this, and the ambitious site builder is, is in between those two. So they, they prefer to do everything through the UI, but if they have to, um, they, they can use a command line maybe a little bit, but maybe they're a little bit afraid of, of using a command line. Um, they might find some snippets of code on Stack Overflow, and they might be a bit nervous about it, but they may not be okay with copy pasting it into, you know, a file. <laughs> and that's what I mean with the ambitious site builder. And I think many of us probably started our Drupal careers as ambitious site builders, you know? Um, and, and I hope that resonates with some people in the room. I, I can't see the room, but um, anyway, I'm saying all of this uh, learning because we, we did declare that as important for Drupal and uh, Drupal success in the future. And so I think we're going to be spending the next several years focused on that persona. You know, and when I think about that, it's things like how do we advance uh, Drupal's AI builder as an example, which is not something that we're actively working on or prioritizing right now. But I think through the lens of the ambitious site builder, they do want to quickly build pages or templates using a page builder or a layout builder. Uh, so, so these are the kinds of things that I think we need to prioritize, um, maybe in Drupal uh, 12 or 13 or you know, whatever it is. It's like really understanding the ambitious site builder persona and then building the things that he or she needs. And uh, we're doing some work on understanding the persona a little bit better, interviews, mm -hmm. user interviews and, and user research. And I think uh, we don't have the results yet, but it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of it. 
Indeed, that's very exciting. I think that uh, uh, all the talks uh, about personas, they started uh, like quite some time, a couple of years ago already. So it's good that uh, we're getting there. Sure. Okay. Uh, that's I right. Think, yeah. <laughs> We've got one more minute, so I don't think that that will be, yeah? One? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, miscommunication, I'm trying to understand what's going on in the background. So indeed, uh, thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, I hope that we gave you a good start of your day, and you will be enjoying the rest of it as much as we enjoyed you having you here. A big hand of applause for Dries, come on! Thank you very much, Yay. thanks for having me. <laughs> I hope you hear that. that and, uh, got cool. bye Thank bye. you, Dries. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, and that was for you, my friends, QA with uh, Dries. I... Perfect. I think we lost our clicker. Are you coming over? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's just do that. Shall I announce that? I don't know.